do subscribe to ikeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello and good morning students uh, let's move on to the next topic radial and tangential acceleration it's a very interesting uh, and very important as well this topic to understand because uh, once you understand the, the both the terms linear uh, i mean the radial and the tangential acceleration you will be able to uh, solve numericals very easily uh, you need to know their directions you need to know their formula to calculate their magnitude so it's a very important topic let's talk about it in detail now first of all let's uh, try and figure out why why we have two acceleration radial and tangential uh, this happens only in case of angular motion in case of linear motion you not be having two acceleration because let imagine a bike which uh, is moving in a particular direction suppose it is moving from left to right at a particular speed suppose 40 km per hour it's going now suppose uh, if the driver wants to accelerate he wants to make the speed 80 km per hour so what will what he'll do is he'll accelerate the velocity the direction of velocity is constant the direction is not changing only the magnitude of velocity is changing the bike is still moving from left to right even if the velocity magnitude of velocity is changing the direction still remains the same so you you need acceleration to change the magnitude that's simple if you want to accelerate a bike you need to accelerate. if you want to increase the speed of the bike you need to accelerate and since the direction is not changing only one acceleration is enough to change the magnitude uh, so what happens in case of angular motion is the direction is changing at every instant the magnitude may change or may not change suppose there is a case in which the magnitude is changing as well as the direction is changing so you need two acceleration one acceleration to change the magnitude and the second one to change the direction so this doesn't happen in case of linear motion in linear motion you have only one direction and in case the magnitude changes so you need only one acceleration to change the magnitude but uh, the working of angular motion is very different here you have the velocity magnitude also changes sometimes the direction always changes so you need two acceleration to change both the magnitude and direction of velocity since velocity is a vector quantity Uh, it it has both magnitude and direction, and since both are changing, you need two acceleration, and these two acceleration are responsible for changing the magnitude and direction. So let's understand with the help of an example this both these terms. so let's imagine a rod or a link oa which is performing circular motion uh, in clockwise direction angular velocity is omega let's assume it is having angular acceleration as well alpha so i assume that it is having both angular velocity and angular acceleration uh, there can be a case in which the link is performing a circular motion or an angular motion with constant angular velocity so if the angular velocity remains constant there will be no acceleration there will be no alpha i have imagined in this case that there is angular acceleration also so it will be accelerating so it will be covering the circle in a different amount of time every time so it is moving in clockwise now first of all see what is the direction of velocity at this instant so direction of velocity is always perpendicular to the link and this velocity term is always uh, denoted to is always with respect to a point because every point will be having a different velocity and the term angular velocity is always with uh, always comes with a link the the whole link has constant angular velocity but different points on the link will have different linear velocities so let's see what is the velocity of point a so as i said earlier velocity of point a will be perpendicular to the link oa to the rod so this is the direction of velocity and uh, if you see uh, if you try and relate what is 
it is uh, it is a absolute or it is a relative velocity since point o is fixed velocity of a with respect to o will be a absolute velocity so you can write v a o that is absolute velocity of a with respect to o so velocity remember this thing velocity is always perpendicular to the link now suppose the link comes here it rotates and comes at this position now the direction of velocity again changes it is always perpendicular to the link <coughs> so as you can see here as the link moves the direction of velocity keeps on changing at every point it keeps on changing and since you have alpha as well the magnitude also keeps on changing so the magnitude is changing the direction is changing so you need two acceleration to change the magnitude and direction let's see one more example position now suppose the rod has come at this point So as you can see here, at different points along the curve, the velocity will be different. Uh, the velocity will be having a different direction. So to change the direction of velocity, you need one acceleration that is called radial acceleration. So this acceleration, radial acceleration helps to change the direction of velocity. Remember this, it's a very important thing, a very important topic. Radial acceleration helps in changing the direction of velocity. And this is how you define radial acceleration. This is how you denote radial acceleration. A raised to R, radial acceleration. And A raised to R, radial acceleration of what link? Radial acceleration of link OA. Or AO. So radial acceleration of AO. This is how you denote it. And now let's see what is the direction. Since acceleration itself is a vector quantity, it will be having some direction. So the direction of radial acceleration is always along the link so direction of velocity is always perpendicular to the link direction of radial acceleration is always along the link towards the center of rotation so here in this case the center of rotation is o so the rate the direction of radial acceleration is along the center of rotation uh, along the radius i mean and towards the center of rotation so as you can see here it is along the radius along the link and towards the center of rotation so that is radial acceleration and what radial acceleration does is it changes the direction of velocity now yeah, the link is having angular acceleration so the magnitude of velocity will also change so the magnitude changes because of tangential acceleration the tangential component of acceleration helps to change the magnitude of velocity and the direction of tangential acceleration is always perpendicular to the to the link or you can say it is along the direction of velocity so a raised to t a o that is tangential acceleration of link AO so it is along the velocity so it's a very important term radial and tangential acceleration radial acceleration is along the link toward the center of rotation Tangential acceleration is always perpendicular to the link or you can say it is along the velocity and it helps to change the magnitude. Radial acceleration helps to, helps to change the direction. Since in angular motion both are changing, there can be a case in which uh, the magnitude of velocity is not changing. You can take the example of a fan. Suppose a fan is rotating, it is performing circular motion. In that case, every point will be having a different velocity. It is performing circular motion. So the point is keeps on changing its position. So the position of A changes, the direction of velocity changes. Since the direction is changing, you need radial acceleration to change the direction. Now, 
the fan is performing a uh, constant uh, motion uh, i mean constant angular motion the magnitude has to remain same since there is no alpha a, there is no alpha term it is having constant angular uh, velocity so there will be no at because at is responsible to change the magnitude and since the magnitude remains constant at is zero so we've seen radial acceleration we've seen tangential the radial as i said earlier it's along the link towards the center of rotation the name itself tells you radial it, is, it has to be along the radius along the link towards the center of rotation tangential is it, as the name tells you it, it has to be along the tangent to the circle or it if it has to be along the tangent or it, you can say it has to be perpendicular to the radius or perpendicular to the link or you can say it is along the velocity now we have seen what they do radial acceleration changes the velocity the direction of velocity tangential changes the magnitude of velocity if in case the circular motion is a uniform circular motion it is moving with uniform speed the magnitude doesn't change so at can be zero sometimes but radial cannot be zero if the motion is angular radial acceleration has to be there it cannot be zero because direction keeps on changing at every instant and magnitude may remain constant so at can be zero sometimes so uh, we have seen how we can denote radial acceleration and tangential acceleration a raise to r a o a raise to t a o now i was telling you an example suppose the fan is switched off and you just uh, put the switch on initially it is having it is at rest and after some time it rotates and gains a particular speed so from zero to some value it it has to change the magnitude that in that case we'll be having a changing magnitude so in that case there will be radial and tangential both suppose suppose in case the fan attains a particular speed now it keeps on moving with the same speed the same angular speed now the magnitude doesn't uh, change so the tangential acceleration again becomes zero suppose the fan is moving with you put the switch on now it has a particular amount of speed now the speed gradually reduces to zero in that case the, the magnitude keeps on changing whenever the magnitude changes this term comes uh, tangential acceleration comes into picture when the magnitude remains constant when the motion is uniform motion with uniform velocity uh, the tangential acceleration is zero so that was all about this topic radial and tangential acceleration there's one uh, formula to calculate the magnitude as well we've seen their directions direction of radial is along the link towards the center of rotation direction of tangential is always perpendicular to the link along the velocity now there's one formula to calculate their magnitudes as well magnitude of radial and tangential acceleration so the formula i'll write it down so tangential acceleration is r into alpha and radial acceleration is v square by r so their derivation is not uh, within the scope of the syllabus so let's avoid it and let's directly focus on the formulas tangential acceleration is r times alpha radial acceleration is v square by r now this the formula that i've written is general formula suppose you're talking about a particular link or you're talking about a particular rod or a particular member so the formula changes As you can see here, here we are talking about the link AO. So the same formula for the link AO can be written as A tangential AO. So instead of R, R is nothing but the radius, which is nothing but AO. So this uh, this is a general formula this is a particular formula only for the link AO now again for radial acceleration a raised to r is v square by r so this is a general formula it, it can be used for any link now let's be particular and apply it to the link AO that we've seen in this case so a radial AO so when you apply this formula for the for the link AO it becomes a radial a o and we cannot write just v we are talking about the velocity of a with respect to o so we have to write v a o square 
upon R that is the AO itself. So this is how you calculate the magnitudes. And we've already seen their directions. Radial is always along the link toward the center of rotation. Tangential is always perpendicular to the link. Link is OA. Tangential is perpendicular to the link or along the velocity. Radial along the link. This is how you denote them. This is the formula to calculate their magnitude. Tangential is R times alpha. Radial acceleration is V square by R. If you apply this formula to a link AO, A tangential AO is AO times alpha. A radial AO is VAO square upon AO. So that was all about this topic, radial and tangential acceleration. We've seen their magnitudes, we've seen their directions, we've seen what they do, we've seen why there are two acceleration in angular motion and why there's only one acceleration in linear motion. Because in linear motion, the direction doesn't change, only the magnitude changes. So there's only one acceleration which is enough to change the magnitude. And in case of angular motion, magnitude may change, direction always changes. So you need, you need two acceleration. Uh, in linear motion, if in case, the magnitude of velocity remains constant. Direction is always constant. The magnitude also remains constant. So acceleration becomes zero. Here, uh, angular motion cannot be a zero acceleration motion because tangential acceleration can be zero if the magnitude remains constant, if it is rotating with constant angular speed. But since the direction is changing every instant of time, uh, you need radial acceleration all the time. Radial acceleration cannot be zero. So angular motion cannot be a zero acceleration motion. So this is a very important topic. I uh, hope you've understood this. We'll be using this further into this chapter uh, to solve numericals to, uh, to calculate velocity acceleration using graphical method. I hope you've understood. Thank you.